In this module, we shall understand what are broadband access technologies by definition. Then we'd look at their taxonomy and specifically we'd look at what are the wireless broadband access technologies which allow the users to reach out to each other on the broadband network. The resources that I have taken for this module and subsequent related modules have been borrowed from Packet Broadband Network Handbook by Hao Jing Wang. So, what are the access technologies? The access technologies to the broadband can be best understood once we relate it to the broadband itself. Broadband, as the name implies, is using the high frequency spectrum. You can think about broadband versus baseband is from voice modulated communication. The user signal is a baseband signal which is centered around zero on the frequency axis. Once it is modulated using a carrier, it becomes a broadband signal which is transmittable. In the context of networks, broadband is the kind of long haul or long distance communication that can be thought of as between a multiplexer and a demultiplexer carrying the traffic between various sources. So if that is broadband communication, then we'll be able to understand it with respect to the access side. The access side comprises access technologies which are baseband in nature. These are also called the first mile or the last mile technologies because it is the access side where the users are connected and they use the network. The taxonomy of overall broadband networks can be looked at from the IP versus non-IP communication. We keep our focus to non-IP based communication. Here we'll keep our discussion to IP based communication that is the packet broadband access networks. You can see that the taxonomy has been defined on the basis of wireline networks, the networks which use transmission media and the wireless networks. Within the wireline network, we have different technologies, for instance, local area networks, passive optical networks, which use fiber optic cable, the DSL modem family, which uses UTP, unshielded twisted pair, and packet cable network that uses coaxial cable. On the wireless network side, we have either IR, infrared wireless systems, for instance, the IR communication technology, which is used in mobile phones. However, these days, the mobile phone technology does not incorporate infrared because of its poor resilience to external interference, especially the white light. Then we have the radio-based wireless networks, and radio-based wireless networks incorporate EM, electromagnetic waves, and all the technologies of modern telecommunications and network-based devices are based on radio communication. The examples of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, WiMAX are to name a few. In the context of wireless technologies, the taxonomy is quite detailed and it is getting updated as we speak. So the wireless technologies can be grouped into, as I said earlier, IR, and radio. Within IR, we can look at free space optics that uses fiber optic communication system devices such as lasers and photodetectors to allow wireless communication. Then we have 802 infrared WLAN family. An example these days is you can also, you might have heard of Li Fi. And then we also have IRDA. However, for the sake of this subject, you would hardly be doing simulation and modeling for these networks 
because the overall physical parameters are more attributed to physics than to electrical engineering. On the other side, for radio-based wireless communication systems, if we talk about very small distances, we can look at either Bluetooth or Home RF or DECT, DECT. Now, we also have 802.15.4 as low rate wireless personal area networks, which is yet another advancement in the last yard systems. For the sake of this module and subsequent modules, we shall briefly touch upon these technologies and we'll convince ourselves that the purpose of each of these technologies is specific to its application and has a certain constraint. That is why one size fits all analogy cannot be made on these technologies. On the last mile or the first mile systems, we have Wi Fi, Hyperland, which is an equivalent of Wi Fi in the European market. Then we have satellite, then we have MMDS and LMDS, and broadband wireless access. Now, these technologies each are based on unique assumptions and network model. In the due course of time, we shall look at each of these in detail. If you have developed an overall picture of these technologies on the basis of their applications, their data rates, the physical distances that they cover, the frequencies that they use, it is about time that we start looking at each of these one by one since we are moving towards the end of the subject of modeling and simulation. When you look at these networks, you'll appreciate that these networks can be modeled and simulated by following them in due detail.